It is probably the sound with most variations in all languages around the world. I'm talking about Ra. And today we're gonna talk about the rules of Ra in the Holy Quran. But before we proceed to the Tajweed rules of Ra, I first need to emphasize that the Arabic Ra is not the same as the English R, and they are not even derived from one another. To learn how to pronounce the Arabic R properly, Make sure you watch this video tutorial in which I explain the technique of Ra and I even give some muscle exercise to train and get it right every time. The most important characteristic about the Quranic Ra is flapping. And we also call it in Arabic Takrir. And it is this sound. This is the sound of flapping or Takrir. Quranic Ra must contain a degree of takrir, or flapping. So, not too much that it's too heavy to listen to, and not too little that the sound loses its characteristic. And that would be wrong as well. So listen to these examples to understand my point about takrir. First, I'll add too much of it, and I want you to try and notice when it is exaggerated. وَالْعَاكِفِينَ <laughs> وَالْرُكْ now I'm gonna try again with too little takrir or flapping. Now these were the two extremes, the first one with too much and the second one with too little. Now let's see how it should sound like. Here is another example to show you how it sounds like when it is exaggerated and when it is not pronounced properly. And now how you should say it properly. So finding the balance of flapping, not too much and not too little of it, is very important. And that was the first thing you needed to know to get the Quranic Ra correctly. Learn and apply the Arabic Ra and moderate your flapping. The second thing you should understand is the difference between full mouth ra and empty mouth ra. As you can see in these charts, both of these sounds are almost identical in everything except for the one thing, and that is the position and the behavior of the back of the tongue. The back of the tongue is raised and pushing backwards when it comes to the full mouth ra. But with the empty mouth, ra, the back of the tongue is lowered and it is in a more relaxed position. So it is important to see the difference and try to imitate it. And of course, the first step to say something right is try and hear it first. So try and hear the difference between full mouth, ra, and empty mouth, ra. مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ so as you can hear it, the first ra is an empty mouth, so we should say ra, and we said al akhir and not al akhir That is not correct. And in the second example, we see that it is a full mouth ra, so we said man kafar and not man kafar. That is not the way to pronounce it. And that was the second thing you needed to know before we get into the rules. And that is to be able to hear and produce the difference between full mouth ra and empty mouth re. Once you get these two concepts, it would be much easier for you to apply the rules of ra and of course fine tune your reading of the Holy Quran. So, ra in the Holy Quran is either full mouth or empty mouth. So, either ra or re, and it is pronounced as full mouth ra in two cases. First is if the ra has fatha or dhamma on top of it, 
like in these examples. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ كَانُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارًا So as you can see in all of these examples, the ra was a full mouth letter, so we said طَهِرَا We said ra and إِبْرَاهِيم So we didn't say إِبْرَاهِيم because it has fatha on top of it. And the same thing applies for the last examples, nasara. Let's have a look at another set of examples when the ra has dhamma on top of it. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ so here we have several examples of ra that has to be pronounced full mouth because it has dhamma on top of it. So we say فَذْكُرُونِي and we say وَشْكُرُوا and وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ and of course we can't say وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ The second case when we are going to pronounce ra full mouth is when ra has sukun but the letter before it has dhamma or fatha, like in these examples. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةِ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَى شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ so in all of these examples, there is one thing in common is that Ra has Sukun on top of it and we know that because it has this sign on top as we know that this is the sign of Sukun. But the letter that comes before it has either Fatha like in these two examples or Dhamma like in these two examples. So that's why we say Arsalna, not Arsalna. And we say Al Marwa, not Al Marwa. That is not correct. So, so these were the cases when you have to pronounce ra as full mouth. When it comes to empty mouth, ra, there are also two cases when you are supposed to pronounce ra as ra or empty mouth. The first case to pronounce empty mouth ra is when it has kasra under it, like in these examples. غير المغضوب عليهم وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْعِجِلَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ As you can see and hear that the ra has kasra under it, so we said غَيْرِ We don't say غَيْرُ That is not correct. We also pronounce the empty mouth را when it has sukun, but the letter before it has kasra, like in these examples. وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا كَدَأْبِ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ As you can see in these two examples, we say وَاغْفِرْ as empty mouth را وَاغْفِرْ And the same thing goes for the other example. We say فِرْعَوْنَ فِرْعَوْنَ now, one last thing. Now, if you have a word that ends with ya and then ra, and you stop at that word, this ra will always be empty mouth, no matter what type of short vowel is on top or under it. But if you continue, the normal rules apply. And to understand that even better, let's look at this example. In this ayah, we see that this word comes two times in the same verse. The first time it has tanween kasr, and the second time it has fatha. The first time I'm going to read, I'm going to stop at the word, and then I'm going to continue. Notice if there is a difference between when I stopped at the word and when I continued on reading. وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهِ وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرٍ 
وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى. As you have heard, the first خير is empty mouth when you stop at it, and also when you keep on reading. And the reason is that it has tanween kasr under it. So we say خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمُهُ الله. The second خير, if you stop at it, we apply the rule that we we're just talking about, which is if you stop at a word that ends with يا and را, it will always be empty mouth فَإِنَّ خير. But when I continued on reading, I applied the normal rule that the را has فتح on top of it, so that means that it is full mouth, so I should say فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى with a full mouth because I kept on reading. Let's look at another example to get this point completely. مَتَاعًا إِلَى الْحَوْلِ غَيْرَ مَتَاعًا إِلَى الْحَوْلِ غَيْرَ إِخْرَاجِ One last example. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ So if you stop at this word that ends with يَا and رَاء it will always be empty mouth but if you keep on going you apply the rules that we were just talking about. So to recap Ra in the Holy Quran. Make sure that you don't do too much flapping or too little. And make sure you understand the difference between full mouth ra and empty mouth re. And make sure you know how to pronounce them properly. As for the full mouth ra, there are two cases, and that is if ra itself has fatha or dhamma. And the second case if ra has sukun, but the letter before. Ra has fatha or dhamma, so you still pronounce ra as full mouth. And ra will be empty mouth if it has kasra, or if the ra has sukun, and the letter before it has kasr, then it will also be empty mouth. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.